Today on WTF, we're showing you a new technique for stabilizing high-fat culinary foams. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. And today we're talking all about culinary foams, specifically how do you incorporate higher fat content. Remember, if you like what you see today, subscribe and stick around for our weekly giveaway. So the first question when we talk about culinary foams is, why do we want to make culinary foams? And it's a really beautiful way to add presentation, taste, flavor, and enhance the experience of any dish that you're creating. When most people think about foams, they're thinking about these beautiful lacy foams, and we have one of these here right now that we can just show you real quick. You might be like, oh yeah, I remember seeing this in a restaurant or on Top Chef or Chopped mm -hmm. or whatever. And this is usually what you see. It's water-based, it's lacy, it's beautiful, it goes away really quickly. Um, this is, I think, what is this, passion fruit? Yeah, passion fruit yeah. juice. So this is just an easy one that we're quickly making. If you're like, how do I make this? You can go onto the links in the description below to our entire culinary foam episode. However, we're not covering this type of foam today because we want to concentrate on how do you add fats to foams. And the reason why we want to do that is because with a fattier foam, you get a richer mouth feel. It's a very different experience. I think it adds a level of complexity to the foam. But up until now, it's been really hard to do because fats don't hold foams well because they're heavy, right? So foams are just surface tension building on each other. And once you have a lot of surface tension, the weight of that fat will quickly collapse any foam. But today, Hannah is going to show you how do you make a stable high fat foam. And where I think I want to start, Hannah, is talking about um, something that we're going to be referring to throughout the episode, which is a concept called hydrophilic lipophilic balance, or HLB value for short, because that's a mouthful. Can you explain a little bit about why, what HLB value is and why do people care about it for making foams? Yeah, of course. So an easy way to think about the HLB value is you could think about it as a water-loving, fat-loving balance. Mm -hmm. So really what we're seeing is that every emulsifier has an HLB value, and this is going to tell us whether it is more attracted to water or it is more attracted to fat. So in the case today, we're going to be working with polysorbate 80 and also mono and diglyceride flakes. And for just a little example, we have over here showcasing these. We have a 50-50 mixture of oil to water, and right here we have just polysorbate 80. Mm -hmm. So you can see this isn't making a foam because our polysorbate 80 mm -hmm. isn't able to emulsify just the fat with the water. Yep. And we see that our monodiglyceride flat flakes are also not able to make a foam. Mm -hmm. It's not properly emulsifying, so what we need is a combination of two emulsifiers with two different HLB values. So we have our polysorbate 80, which has a high HLB value of 15. So this means it is a water-loving emulsifier. Mm -hmm. And we have our mono and diglyceride flakes, which has an HLB value of three to six, meaning that it is a fat-loving um, emulsifier and it is going to be more attracted to fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and HLB values typically have a range between like one to mm -hmm. 16. So you can kind of see we picked two that are on very different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And each HLB value um, will be different. If you're like, I have an emulsifier, can I use it to foam? If so, what's the HLB value? We will have a reference sheet in the links in the description below for that information. Um, but usually a quick Google will also yield you the answer as well. Now today, what we're talking about is how do you create a stable fatty mm -hmm. foam? And the reason that we wanted to grab the mono and diglyceride flakes and the polysorbate 80 is, is like Hannah said, they come from both ends of the HLB spectrum. Yes. So by combining them, we are creating a stronger handshake between the oil and the water in our mixture. So this is going to help stabilize that mixture. And Hannah is going to walk you through step by step what the proper technique is for doing that. And as we're doing it, we'll talk a little bit more about like 
why we pick these, how do you use them, you know, what if you want to do something else. So we'll kind of go through all that as we're going through our demo today. All right, Hannah, let's go through what are the steps for properly incorporating two different emulsifiers from, you know, these different HLB balances into the same mixture. Yeah, so this really is going to end up being no different than making a salad dressing or a mayonnaise where you are slowly drizzling in your oil into your water mixture. Um, but first we have, uh, we need to first be melting our mono and diglyceride flakes into our oil. So as you can see, our mono and diglyceride flakes, they do come in a solid form. So of course we need to melt these down. Mm -hmm. When you are looking at um, different types of emulsifiers, they have different hydration requirements. So mono and diglyceride flakes is a little unique in that it does require heating in order to be incorporated. That's not going to be the case for every single one. So depending on what you're getting, make sure that you take a look at you know, your package to make sure you understand the proper hydration techniques for it. All right, and what do we have here? How, how, what's the ratio that we're using working on today? Yeah, so this is olive oil, just plain old olive oil. And today we are doing a 50-50 mixture. So I have 25, I mean, not 25, 250 grams of olive oil here. And later we're gonna be using an oil, I mean, I'm sorry, a balsamic vinegar and water mixture. Mm -hmm. So this is 200 grams of water and 50 grams of vinegar. Of course, 250 grams of vinegar would be quite a punch. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're gonna dilute that a little bit. And now simply we're just gonna be adding our mono and diglyceride flakes in here. And they melt at a pretty low temperature. So I would just say maybe heat this up to about 150 or so. Okay. Now, one of the really cool things that we did when we were testing this particular recipe and, th and thinking about emulsifiers was we really wanted to push the envelope on how much fat can we possibly put into a foam. You know, you could foam 100% fat with just a monoid and diglycerides, mm -hmm. but what you get is a very, um, uh, I would say like, like a very, very heavy foam. It doesn't yeah. really hold its shape. It kind of right. looks it's like what exactly this is right that. now. It looks yep. like more of a, like a pudding. And that's not what we wanted. We wanted a foam that can like have a little volume, mm -hmm. hold its shape. So we want to see how much fat we can put in there and still have that effect. Um, Hannah, can you talk a little bit about like what you found really worked, kind of how much you were able to get in there and why, you know, and what's, uh, what was successful and what wasn't? Yeah, so we ended up uh, settling at 50-50 because I tried pushing the fat content to about 70% and what I was finding then was the emulsion was just breaking. Mm -hmm. It wasn't being, the monodiglyceride and the polysorbate, they just weren't working to their best advantage at that point. Mm -hmm. The oil was leaking out of the foam pretty right away after it came out of the canister. So I would definitely recommend 50-50. Seems like the max here with just the emulsify the emulsion being able to be stable, really. Yeah. Is there a way to possibly push it further? I'm sure there is, mm -hmm. and if someone wants to be out there doing it, like, please let us know what you find. And the other reason why we kind of stopped at 50-50 was that after a while, it just didn't taste good anymore. Yeah. Yeah, when you're <laughs> doing something that's like 70% fat, it starts feeling greasy, starts feeling oily, and that mouthfeel um, isn't pleasant. So of course, you know, we're not just doing it for the sake of doing it, we also want it to taste good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and another thing that I did find was if you think, oh, I could just add some more emulsifiers, I could just go ahead and add more mono and diglyceride flakes. Mm -hmm. Mono and diglyceride flakes also thicken, so what I was finding is that the mixture was becoming so thick that mm -hmm. it actually wasn't able to even get out of the whipping siphon. Mm -hmm. So that was also a problem we were running into and why 50-50 seems to be the go-to for yeah. high fat. Yeah, that's a great point. Sometimes mm -hmm. people think, oh, if it's not working, let me just bump it up. And there's definitely a diminishing return to, to bumping mm -hmm. it up. Like there's a ceiling where after all, it's, it makes it worse, not yeah. better. <laughs> all right, so while that's melting, yeah. what else are we, what are we doing with the um, with the vinegar mixture. Yeah, so this is gonna be pretty simple. We are gonna be adding our water base into the blender, putting the lid on, of course, and then we are just gonna be drizzling in our polysorbate 80 ab right here. And it barely even looks like I have anything in this tiny bowl. It is only about one gram of polysorbate. Okay. So quite a small amount. And there we go. 
And you can see the polysorbate 80 is acting right away because even at that tiny amount, it's already kind of starting to foam that mixture. Obviously, we're not trying to foam this by itself, but it will if, if you let it. All right, give it a little stir. All right, so now you can see that those flakes are all gone, mm -hmm. and we just have a mixture that looks like olive oil. And you can actually see it starting to settle along the sides and thickening the oil. Mm -hmm. And of course, we only use a tiny mm -hmm. bit of the polysorbate 80. How much mono and diglyceride flakes is it? This is a 20 grams of mono and diglyceride, so it's about 8% of the weight of the oil. Mm -hmm. And the polysorbate, I believe, was only at 0.5%. Yeah, and you so. can kind of see how much beautiful foam that it's yeah. already made here. But of course, this is a just a water foam. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, those percentages are just from the ranges that we recommend here mm -hmm. at Modernist Pantry. They can be found on the back of the labeling. And I just used the highest percentage in those ranges. Mm -hmm. All right. So just like you're making a salad dressing, we're going to go ahead and add our oil in. So just like a salad dressing looks like you're drizzling in that oil really slowly. Yes. If you just dump the whole thing in, you're likely to go ahead and break that emulsion and all the work you've put in already. So now we have our fully emulsified liquid. So you can see it's a little bit thicker than before. Mm -hmm. This is lovely brown color. <laughs> and we're just going to be pouring this right into our whipping siphon. Okay. So while Hannah's doing that, I want to take a quick moment to talk about this week's giveaway. And this week's giveaway will be a bag of the model and diglyceride flakes, as well as a bottle of the poly sorbet 80. So you can start having fun making different types of foams and also using these emulsifiers in different ways. In order to enter to win, leave in the comments below a great foam that you think you can make with these ingredients. Alright, and while Hannah's doing this, I think the other thing we wanted to just mention is why are we using a whip and siphon? I know over here in the very beginning, we were just making this beautiful foam with our magic air maker. It was bubbling up. Why can't we do that um, with this particular foam? Yeah, so since this is high fat, we're, and fat is a denser um, just in weight, it's not going to be able to hold the surface tension that water can and make that really light, fluffy foam. So. It, the whipping siphon, this is going to be making a denser foam. So what's actually happening is I have these nitrous oxide canisters and we are charging our whipping siphon with them. We're going to be using two charges. What this is doing, it's pressurizing our can. So then when we go ahead and discharge the foam or the liquid at that point onto the plate, the nitrous oxide is actually escaping from the liquid. It's aerating it and it's leaving these tiny little air pockets and that's what's giving us this beautiful foam. Cool. So we're gonna go ahead. So now we have this two times, two charges, and just give it a nice good shake. Mm -hmm. And we can go ahead and plate this. Look at the gorgeous volume on this foam. I want to quickly compare that to this here. So this is mono, This is kind of um, a full fat foam. Yep. Is it technically a foam? Yes. But does it look great? No. no. When you compare it against, you know, what this one does. So over here, we, well, what do we make? I we, can't see it. <laughs> we made a caprese salad, mm -hmm. just a little modern take on it with our balsamic and olive oil foam. We've got some teeny tiny tomatoes, some mm -hmm. balsamic pearls, mozzarella, of course. And yeah. And this one we made before we started shooting. So it's been sitting on the plate for about like 20, 20 or so minutes yeah. now. And you can see the foam that we made about 20 minutes ago, it's still holding its shape. And that's the big thing that we were looking for texturally. Um, you know, if you're doing this at a party, at a service, at your restaurant, you don't want to be, I know one of the th reasons why people don't do foams is that they collapse so quickly yeah. that you can't, you know, you worry about getting it to, you know, to the diner mm -hmm. in time. So with this, you don't have to worry about it. You can just, you know, plate it when you're ready and you know that it's going to be a beautiful presentation. 
And I yeah. love the texture on this. It's almost like, like a mousse. It's like a mousse, yeah. yeah. So it's really light, it's very creamy, and it's really, really delicious. So you get like that high quality olive oil, tang from the balsamic, it's all coming through. But at 50 50, it's not greasy. Yep. It doesn't feel gross, you know, like especially if I mix it with some tomatoes and stuff. This would be a really nice little bite. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. And if you are curious, you're like, I don't have mono and glycosides, I don't have polysorbate, I have other emulsifiers, can I use them? The answer is maybe. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about why that is and how do you choose the right emulsifiers, how do you calculate the percentages, how do you start your experimentation, in the link in the description below, there's an Ask a Chef that really goes in depth into some of the more of the whys behind this and the hows behind how do you start combining your emulsifiers and foaming agents together. So that was too much for us to cover in the video, but it's a great resource. Definitely check it out. Um, and that I think that's pretty much it for us today. And until next week, from here in a modernist pantry test kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. 